how to create a custom graphic legend to display door and window frame types using Vectorworks. Now, the graphic legend tool is this great new flexible feature that enables you to generate all kinds of helpful drawings with dimensions and notes quickly, and it comes with a lot of predefined styles. The door and window styles that come packaged in the Vectorworks library create legends that display all of the doors or windows in a file that are listed on your schedule. Now, an architect is typically dealing with a lot of different doors and windows in a project, but usually only wants to show a few different door and window types. So I've created this simple workflow that will help you increase your productivity and demonstrate graphic legend functionality while showing you how to set up a really useful style that will filter through all of your door and window types to display only the types that you want. So let's go. Now, before we jump into Vectorworks, I'd like to show you the doors where we're going to be applying data for our graphic legend. This is a window wall with a sliding door frame, and I'm going to label it door type A. We're in the main entry area for the house with these amazing views, so right across the way we'll have the same system, and I'm going to also label this as a door type A. I'm just going to apply data to a few doors in this example, and you would continue this process with all of the doors in a project. This sitting room entry door will be labeled as door type C. This is a custom slatted door that will have all wooden frame and remote entry locks. Now going outside to another slider, this door is a little different from what we have at the window wall. So I'm going to label it as type B. It's an aluminum slider. And then finally, we have another entry door to the mudroom and garage. It's the same as the sitting room, so I'll also label this as door type C. Now let's jump over to Vectorworks. Okay, here we are back in the Vectorworks model, and I just wanted to start where we left off in the dining room. I'm going to select on this door and change this to a top plan view. And I'm just selecting that so that you can kind of orient yourself to the drawings. I can also select it here in top view. And that's that dining area. First thing I want to do is go up to the tool drop down menu and select on the data manager with that door selected. It's going to bring up the door in the center pane here. All of the objects are on the left, the door is selected in the center, and then we have our data sheets. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, the data manager, it's a really powerful tool, a little bit more advanced feature. Um, but it's going to make this a lot easier for us to add data. Um, what I want to do is come down here and find the frame type. And I'm going to add it into the simplified door data sheet. You can see we have a BIM door here as well. Um, but this frame type is kind of buried in the tool settings. And I just want to be able to quickly and easily add information to the doors as I select them rather than go into the door settings. So I'm going to kick that over here to the data sheet. And then the next one I want to find is the user field. Um, and I can you know, select any parameter from that door. We also have these 10 user fields available in doors and windows that enable us to just add any kind of information that we want and then query it out of that specific instance. And so I'm going to go ahead and push that user field one over here. So we have our frame type and our user field one on that simplified door data sheet. We go ahead and click OK there. And just to show you, if I go into settings, just to show you how, um, you know, I'd have to do this for all of the door frame types. I could select multiple doors and then go into the settings for those doors or windows. And then I'd have to come into data. And then there's my frame type and my user field. I'd have enter that information, then press OK and let it load. Rather than do that, if we set it up to be in a data sheet, you can see that we have our simplified door. Here's our default settings. And right here in this data sheet dropdown, change it to simplified door. I have my frame type and my user field. Now if I select two door objects, I can go into that frame type and put in A and then in my user field. 
For these, I'm just gonna type in aluminum and then hit tab to lock that in there. Now I can go ahead and scroll over here to these other doors that we want to populate with that information and I'll select door six and door seven in the frame type. This one was C and this is going to be a wood entry. And then finally I can come over here and select this slider. I think we've got B for that type and in the user field we're also going to type in. Now let's go over to our sheets. I already have a door schedule sheet set up. Go ahead and select on that. And you can see we've got our 24 doors listed here. And I'd like to put a graphic legend right below that. So go ahead and just click once and then click twice to draw that box and over here in the object info palette, you see we have the graphic legend selected. I'm going to change it to the shape tab. And it's oftentimes really easy to start with something that's pre-made. And I'm going to use that door type legend that comes with the, in the library. And we'll go ahead and click OK on that. It'll take a moment to recalculate calculate that uh, legend and then render that graphic. Now you can see that this graphic legend displays all of the doors in a project and that's really not what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and select, change to my selection tool and you can see that it is styled and we can't define this legend source. So first thing I want to do is convert to an unstyled legend and that's going to open up all of these settings. Before I jump in, I'm going to go ahead and change this to door frame types. Go ahead and hit tab to enter that in there. And now I can define this legend source. You see that I have other options available. If I go ahead and click on this, it's going to bring up a dialogue that if you've used your data tags or worksheets, it should look somewhat familiar. This enables us to define our custom source, just set up the sorting for this. And we want to go in and click on this. The first thing is to change this to any criteria in this set. And then we'll change the type to our field value. And then the crop in the second column, we want to go ahead and come down here to our door and find that frame type. So if we go on, scroll down to frame type right here, and then in this last column, we want to pick up a, and then I'll select on the next two. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. You can see that we have two of those and we'll hit duplicate twice. And I want to change this to B and then C and you can see that that is going to change from three to five and we would want to do that for all of the frame types that we've set up, whether they're doors or windows, if we're going through this, go ahead and click OK. Oh, and then we're going to go ahead and change report by to from ID label to frame type. And we'll also change this from ID label to frame type. So we're reporting by frame type and sorting by frame type. We're down to three cells here and we'll say, okay. Okay. Now we're getting a lot closer, but you can see we still have a little bit of work to do because we're, we're reporting multiple values here. I think it's door one and two, and then same thing over here, multiple values. And we wanted to have custom information. We also want to get rid of these dimensions here because this could be any dimension. Um, it's just about the type. And so first thing I'm going to do is double click on that and then edit that cell layout. And that'll bring us into the cell layout for the graphic legend. You can see that we have our, this gray box here, and this is the image in the graphic legend. Um, we can have multiple images here. We can change the way they look. Um, 
And so I'll go ahead and define this legend image. Here we can change classes, the view, um, how it renders, whether it's you know, shaded or hidden line. Um, we can also add rendering settings here. But what I wanna do is get rid of the vertical dimension and it will take care of that one there. And I also want to get rid of that horizontal dimension right here. We also have some abilities to adjust the way that those dimensions look at what class they're entered into and the scale. So with that set, I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this. And the other thing you'll see is this little gray box. This has to do with the alignment and we can change that alignment vertically or horizontally. And I'm going to change this so it's sitting over to the left. And now we need to change this ID tag so it displays the correct information that we'd like to see. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down here. I like to set it down a little bit lower, give myself some room. And I'm going to turn off the auto constraints. And I'm going to deselect dynamic text. And I like to have these as labels. So the dynamic text will change that text based on whatever um, data field it's linked to for that object. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate these. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of these and I want to align these things left. And then the first one, I'm gonna change this so that it's a label that says frame type. The next one, I want it to be operation. And then finally, I'm going to have this as material. Again, it could be anything that I'd like it to be. I'm going to have that user field define that. So I'll go ahead and call this one material if it was a custom. If it was a commercial project, I might have it say, um, you know, I might define it a little differently. And now I want to be able to pull the information in this dynamic text. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and define this graphic legend field. And we have it selecting the object parameters for the door. And we want to change this from ID label. Go ahead and scroll on up to frame type. And the important thing is to replace this current definition. So we'll hit replace. Now we have the frame type in there. I'm gonna hit okay. For operation, again, we're gonna say use dynamic text, and then we're gonna define that. And in Vectorworks, operation and configuration are used interchangeably. So I'm gonna scroll up to configuration. And again, make sure you hit that replace current and hit OK. And then for material, go ahead and select on that. We'll use dynamic text and we're going to define this. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and hit U to search down to the user field, select that, replace the current definition, hit OK. Now I can put any sort of graphic or object in here, any sort of text. Uh, I'm just going to draw a line and maybe change that thickness a little bit. And now we have our labels and our text defined. We'll go ahead and exit out of this. And it's gonna take a moment to recalculate. Okay, now we have our door frame type legend and it's showing our frame type our operation and the material that we're using for these. And it's just finding the three out of the five that we labeled. So the last thing we need to do, last but not least, we need to go up and create a new plugin style for this. And we'll go ahead and put this in our graphic legends folder. So I have two folders here. Go ahead and click OK. And here we have an opportunity to change the style name. So I'm going to call this door frame types. 
Okay, now we have it in our library. So we can go over here to our graphic legends and you can see there's our door frame types and we have the ability to put this into a template or share it with other projects. And that's it. I hope this helps you understand the functionality of graphic legends a bit more. They're an extremely powerful tool and once you understand the technology, you can use them to automate all kinds of drawings. Click on the link below to see the full fly through on this project. If you have any questions, head over to my new forum at buildinginformationmodeling.locals.com. If you'd like personalized training, help with your Vectorworks files or rendering, visit my website at sim.studio. Keep up the good work and I wish you well.